Hello and welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 313. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Today is Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. And in tonight's live stream, I have a really fun treat box for you. I'm calling it an envelope cube treat box. So I'm excited to share that with you. And I actually am going to show you two different ways to close it. So um, as you're rolling on in, if you're watching us live, say hello and where you're watching from. And if you're new here, if this is your first time here, let us know in the chat. My amazing community will give you a big warm welcome. I want to give a special shout out to those who are my Pixie patrons. They, it looks like my internet is going in and out maybe. Um, the Pixie patrons are those that have the little magic wand next to their name. I want to thank them all for their support of the channel. And I hope you guys are doing well tonight. A um, couple of quick housekeeping things. If you don't already have a Girl Scout in your life, my daughter Lily is selling Girl Scout cookies. It's cookie time. So in the uh, description of this video is a link if you are interested in purchasing cookies. Couple options, you can have them shipped to you. If you happen to be local to us within about 25 miles, Lily and I can deliver in person. And if cookies are not your thing, you can also purchase um, don't cookies for donation for the Smiles for Military. Um, let's see, I've got Brian here watching for your questions and comments. If you do have a question for me, be sure to put a cue in front of that question. That makes sure it gets into my cue uh, when we do tonight's Q&A, which I will save till the end of the live stream so I can focus on tonight's project. And uh, I'll stay on until I answer all of your questions. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do to shop with me is use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto-magically take you to the Stampin' Up! online store, shopping with me and with my current host code already applied to your order. Now, if your order is $150 or more before shipping or taxes, make sure to remove that host code. You'll see that on the shopping cart screen. There's a little trash icon. You only want to do that on orders of $150 or more. Delete the host code. You'll get Stampin' Rewards, and you'll also get Pixie Perks from me as well. It is an exciting time of year, my favorite time of the Stampin' Up! year, celebration, and that you can earn free products for purchases of $50 or more. If you shop big, you can also get some additional Stampin' Rewards, and then the best deal of the bunch is the Starter Kit. The $99 starter kit comes with $125 in product of your choice, plus one of two options. Option one is the best value. It is the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio, which is a tempered glass craft mat, um, a silicone mat that comes with it, and a chamois. That's a $60 value you would get for free from now through February 29th if you join the Stampin' Up! family. The other option, if you don't want the Stampin' Glass mat, is an additional $30 in product. So you can get $155 in product for $99 or the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio plus $125 in product for $99. And that goes through February 29th, the Starter Kit Special, as well as Celebration. We've got, I think it's about 14 items in Celebration that are free um, options. Uh, I can't remember the numbers. I want to say most of them are level one. Those are free with $50 purchase. And there's a few that are level two which is free with a $100 purchase. I'm looking at my notes. Quick update on product shares. If you ordered a product share with me and you're waiting on those, we are working really hard this week. I'm gonna try to move through tonight's live stream so Brian and I can get back to cutting and wrapping and packaging and getting things ready. We are on target to ship product shares out next week. And just a reminder, Monday is a holiday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So obviously we won't be shipping out Monday, but I'm going to work, well, we're going to work really hard to try to get shipments out Tuesday or Wednesday. Celebration. I'm looking at my notes here. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip my screen and we're going to get started. <clears throat> So I want to give a shout out to a couple of special people. One is Linda for bringing this project to my attention. I actually have made a project like this before, but I've never shared it on my uh, blog or live streams. 
Um, lots of German demonstrators have done similar projects to this. So I want to give a shout out specifically to Ava Schrottmeyer from lovelymade.me. She has this similar size made with the envelope punch board. So in the description of the video, I do have a link to a project sheet. We're going to do this without the envelope punch board tonight. I want to show you how we can make it with the Simply Scored. And, um, I also included measurements if you still have your envelope punch board. So if you don't know what the envelope punch board looks like, this was the Stampin' Up! version. It's long since retired. Um, it's by We Are Memory Keepers. So many of you, if you've been crafting for a long time, you probably have one of these, but you can make this box with the envelope punch board. Tonight, I'm gonna show you how you can do it without the envelope punch board. I love to pixify things. So shout out to Ava Schrottmeyer at lovelymade.me and Linda Niemeyer. Thank you so much for asking me to pixify, pixify this. She's one of my pixie patrons. Alrighty. The other thing I love about this box is it uses a six by six inch piece of designer series paper. So um, it is basically diagonal score lines, which helps you to maximize the size of the box that you can get. Now, if you were to, let me show you an example. I did a sample. I always make a lot of things for the trash can. <laughs> so this is also using six by six, but put together kind of the traditional way to make a box. And you can just see the difference with the size. I'm just gonna hold those up. I'm gonna fold those down so you can kind of get an idea of the size. So you get a lot, not a lot more, but a little bit more square footage isn't the right term, but you understand what I mean. You get a bigger box when you do these diagonal score lines. So I love that. And um, this is also a great project for those that uh, participate in product shares, especially my product shares, because we do those in six by six pieces. So I'm going to show you how to do both of these. All the steps are the same, except for the way that you close the box. I'm going to show you two different ways. And we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So again, linked in the description is the project sheet. You've got a picture of the template, a picture of the project, the measurements, a QR code to link you back to this video when you sit down to create it yourself. That QR code does not expire so that you can always get back to um, watch the video as needed. I will add chapters to this video after the live stream so you can jump around to different parts. And this paper comes from the Celebration brochure. It is my favorite paper in Celebration. And it is the Sunny Days paper. So on page five of the Celebration brochure, it is a beautiful pack of designer series paper. I actually love all the papers, but this one is my favorite. And I love this green pattern. I think these are poppies. So you can get this for free with a $50 purchase. And then a couple of the products that I'm using tonight, the stamp set is a throwback to the annual catalog. And this is the Crafting With You stamp set. We're using both You Inspire Me and With Love on tonight's projects. I love this stamp set. And I've got a couple of die sets that we're using. The Reach for the Stars, because this is kind of my go-to for circle dies. And I am using these two circle dies, I'll give you a quick um, idea of the diameters of these circles. About one and an eighth and one and a half. Does that sound right? Yeah, one and one eighth. One and three eighths, basically. And then I'm also using the... <laughs> I'm still learning the product names. Hold on, let me look at my project sheet. <clears throat> This is what the project sheet looks like, by the way. So you see the template, the photo. Um, it is the Thoughtful Expressions dies. I love the nested dies that come in here. So this will be one that I'm going to grab quite a bit throughout this catalog. And we are using the two smallest of these. They almost look like the outside of doilies to me is what they remind me of. So something different, but look at your layering dies and the stamp set you want to use for your project. Use what you got in your stash. Okay, so, and then we're going to use my favorite, rhinestone basic jewels. I have to keep reminding myself to put my tools back in the right spot so I can find them again. <laughs> <clears throat> 
All right, I'm gonna bring out the Simply Scored, and I love this tool. It is my absolute favorite tool that Stampin' Up! offers, because you know me, I love making boxes. Uh, this tool is $36. It is a staple in my craft room. I have a few of them. I mostly use this one, but you'll notice that I've got a big Sharpie line going right down the six inch line. And that is specifically for purposes of doing diagonal score lines like we're gonna use tonight. So again, six by six designer series paper. This is Sunny Days from Celebration. And I'm gonna line up the points. So I've got this kind of in a diamond shape. I'm lining up the points right there on that Sharpie line or the six inch score line. This ensures that as I score, and I look at measurements along the top that that's gonna go exactly where I want it to. Basically, it's at a 45 degree angle because we're on the diagonal here. So we're gonna start, the first score line is gonna be here on my left at three and three eighths. And I am making sure to hold my paper in place. That's the most important thing about this. So three and three eighths, five and one eighth, and I start in the groove and then just come over the paper and pull it down. So three and three eighths, five and one eighth, six and seven eighths, and eight and five eighths. Okay, I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn. I'm gonna repeat the same thing. Measurements are all the same. Get those points lined up and then hold your paper in place. So three and three eighths. Yes, I do miss my diagonal score plate. So three and three eighths, five and one eight, one eight, <laughs> six and seven eighths, and eight and five eighths. Again, all those measurements are on the project sheet for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my Simply Scored away. And we're going to fold and burnish on all the score lines. I love the back side of this paper too, the rainbows. I was trying to think of what happened this week and we've just been working on product shares, haven't we? Brian is a saint. He's doing all the labels and cut all the ribbon. The problem is he's good at it, so I keep asking him to help, don't I? <laughs> all right, so I've gone ahead and folded and burnished on all the score lines, and let me bring in the template here. This template's gonna look wackadoo <laughs> because it just looks crazy. So um, all of these squares, where you can see the whole square, those are one and three quarter inch. So this is a one and three quarter inch cubed box or cube box, and we're gonna go ahead and decide which is gonna be basically our lid. So the box itself, as it goes together, is going to have kind of this pointed, um, the, the corner is actually gonna be the tab that tucks into the box. So this is sort of a direct, well, it is a directional paper, but it really doesn't matter the direction. Uh, because everything's gonna be on the diagonal anyways, but I'm just gonna kind of take a look. I think because, I mean, even though the pattern's kind of going at an angle here, I want this to be my lid. So um, the best idea I have to mark that as the lid is to round this corner. So I'm just gonna bring in my detailed trio punch. It's retired, but you've gotta grab any corner rounder punch you have. And that's just gonna let me know that that is the, basically the top part of our box there, the round part. Now again, I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this box. I just one's just easiest to show because I don't want to untie, I don't want to untie the bow yet. <laughs> We're gonna do both versions though, okay? Let me get that out of the way. And so that is basically opposite the rounded corner. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna keep it at an angle here. So we've got our rounded corner up here at the top. On the bottom, I'm gonna cut up each of those vertical score lines. Let's put a pin in that. First, let's go ahead and cut out all these little triangles. That's the easiest thing to do first. So uh, depending on which side of the paper you can see your score lines better, 
I'm gonna catch the light here. You'll see where the score lines crisscross, we get this little triangular piece. So we wanna remove all eight of those. Now, the envelope punch board makes that really easy to do, um, but I do also love working on this project without the envelope punch board. They're just fun to put together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all of those little triangles. Perfect box for Valentine's, Judy, I agree. Change it up with Valentine's paper. Super cute box. I also did a Valentine's box last week if you want some more inspiration there. And I'm just cutting right on the score line to remove those little triangles. Now I tried so many different measurements um, to try to reduce the triangles we had to cut out um, but it just wouldn't line up because what geometry? Uh, it's geometry, geometry, right? Never know which math to call it. Maths. <laughs> and we got one more. All right, let's get those pieces out of here. So we'll do that. All right, so again, I'm gonna pay attention to where my little rounded corner is, that's the top. So opposite that, I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines. Let me turn it this way. We've got a rounded corner at the top. I'm gonna to cut up these vertical score lines. I'm gonna stop at that second horizontal score line. I'm actually gonna cut on the opposite side because it's just easier with me being right-handed. Okay, so we've got a rounded, I'm gonna turn it this way, rounded piece there, and then we have just basically released these two sections by cutting up those vertical score lines, stopping at the second horizontal score line, okay? Now, the opposite, or these sections adjacent to the rounded corner, we're gonna actually put some diagonal score lines in, but we can do that with our hands. We don't need any tools for that. So what I like to do, I've got my rounded edge here. I'm just gonna fold on that second score line from the right, and I'm gonna line up this score line here with the folded edge here, and that's gonna put a diagonal fold right there. I like to put my fingernail or even the tip of a bone folder right there at the intersection of those two score lines, that right angle there. And then we're going, I'm going to do it really quickly and then I'll bring it right up to the camera. Like so. Okay, so what we've done is we've put that diagonal score line right there in the center. It's this one right here. Like that. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. And the best way to know where to do this is the sections that we did not cut. So we cut the ones on the bottom and then we're gonna go ahead and put that diagonal score line here. So again, I'm gonna go this way, putting my fingernail right there at that intersection, lining up the score line with the folded edge to do that basically box corner there or that edge, okay? So I would come in and just burnish those. Just burnish that diagonal score line like so, okay? All right, now it's time to do a little bit of cutting. I have found that the easiest way to do this is on the paper trimmer. I'm gonna show you uh, where you can cut if you just wanna cut by hand, so. Where we have these diagonal, or I should say these, the, uh, well, they are diagonal technically. <laughs> Those score lines that we just added or the fold lines. We basically want to cut, I'm going to fold these two tabs in. We want to cut from score line to score line because we want this to be a flat edge. Right now, because of where we cut out those little, let me flip this over so you can see it. 
because of where we cut out those triangles, we've got this extra piece of paper there. And this is really the only part that we're gonna remove. The easiest way to do it is on the paper trimmer, fold those two tabs under so we don't cut them inadvertently. And we're gonna go ahead and cut from, catching the light here, score line to score line. So let me bring in the paper trimmer and show you that up close. So again, make sure you fold these tabs out of the way because we don't want to cut those by accident. And then I'm going to go ahead and line up. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit here. I'm going to catch the light if I can. So see those two score lines? I'm going to go ahead and line up if I can see them with the lights right where those score lines hit the edge of the paper. I'm going to go ahead and cut. So we're just removing this piece that was kind of jutting out between the two oops, between the two triangles that we cut away. We just removed that. Now that's going to look weird, but once we put the box together, it'll make more sense. So I'm going to turn it a quarter of a turn. We're going to do the same thing. Fold those tabs out of the way. I know I'm super zoomed in right now, and we're going to line up where those two score lines hit the edge right on the cutting groove. If I could see them, let's see, there's one and there's the other. Another thing you can look at is do you see where that flat edge is lined up at the second vertical line to the right of the cutting groove? That's the half inch mark. So that's all we're cutting off is a little half inch section there. Okay, so those are the only pieces we're cutting off. They look like that. Zoom back out. So what we've just done now, is cut away those two pieces that were sticking out. You'll see we still have them here and that's totally fine. We can leave those on, okay? This is just gonna give us a really nice finish on the top of the box. Okay, so now this is ready for us to start putting together. So I'm gonna to put together this one. I'm gonna show you how to make this version of the box with the cute little ribbon closure. And then I have another one that's already cut and scored and ready to assemble. And then I will show you how to make this version, just a slight modification. Okay, so that's the template again. You'll see that on the project sheet. The envelope cube treat box. Brian and I were trying to come up with the name of it. So now um, Ava Schrottmeyer's is a straw box because, which is really cute, she closed it with a straw on the top. I, ch I chose to close it with ribbon. Uh, but if you've got a punch that is big enough, for a, to punch a hole for a straw, like a paper straw to, grow, to go through, you could use that. That's another option to close this. So, all right, so here's what I'm gonna start doing. I've got my rounded thing at the top and I'm gonna bring in liquid glue for this. We're gonna start with adhering these two points on the left and the right. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna fold on the first score line from the left and I'm gonna put just a little, I don't know, half inch circle of glue right there kind of in the point. And on this other point, I'm gonna do the same thing, but on the back side of the paper. Okay, so I've got glue here. I've folded on the first score line from the left and I've got glue there in the same position. I'm gonna fold now on the second score line from the right and press that flat. Just to get those two points adhered to each other you might start to see that this is beginning to look a little bit like a box. A weird looking box, but a box, right? <laughs> It'll be magic once it's all put together, okay? So I'm just basically pushing it flat both ways. We're basically using the score lines to make sure that that lines up, okay? So now, this part here where we've got these diagonal score lines, that's the top of the box. So we're not gonna focus on that right now, we're gonna focus on the bottom. And the way that I like to do this is we're gonna put the two tabs in. I'm gonna dry fit this so you can see how it's gonna to go together. And this folds on the bottom and then comes up to the front. And it actually lines up, all the angles line up right there. Do you see how you've got that 
those um, points there, this is gonna line up right over the top there. I love how that works, the geometry of this, okay? So with these tabs on the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and put, kind of similar to what we just did with the other tabs, a little bit of glue on the back side of one, and I'm only coming down about a half of an inch there, and then the front side of the other. Just have to remember which order to put those down. Then I'm also gonna put glue here along the bottom. I'm gonna do the bottom first. You could do this all at once by also putting glue here, but I'm gonna wait to do that. One quick tip I should have mentioned, I wouldn't go all the way to the score line on this centerpiece. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one down first and then the other tab. They're funny looking tabs, but you won't even notice them. And then I'm gonna fold that one up to the bottom. Okay, now you just wanna make sure that this box is squared up on the bottom. I'm just lining up the edges here. I'm gonna close my glue bottle and just press from the inside here. And then while that's still a little bit wet, I'm gonna go ahead and come in and put liquid glue on this sort of house shape looking piece. And we're gonna fold that up to the front. Now, I like to make sure I've got my a finger on the inside of the box, on the, on the inside of the box and on the outside. I'm just pressing from the outside to the inside. And I'm lining up that diagonal edge there, okay? And again, I'm just gonna press again from the bottom. But that is how that box goes together. It's so cool how everything lines up and creates this larger size box than we would have gotten if we did straight score lines. So to do sort of the straw version of the box, I'm gonna actually pull these score lines out. You see how they're folding in and that's just because of the way that we created them in the first place. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out and kind of pinch. I think you're probably gonna to start to see what's happening here, okay? I'm gonna tuck this tab inside the box and then these tabs are just gonna fold up like so. Kinda of looks a little bit like a house without a roof. Is that what that looks like? Yeah, house without a roof. So here, if you had a hole punch that was um, probably a quarter of an inch in diameter. I actually don't have, I used to have one, I don't have one any longer. But if you've got a quarter inch hole punch, you could punch holes here and here that would fit a paper straw. You know the paper straws that have like the diagonal stripes? And you could hold your box together that way. That's the example you'll see um, with Ava Schrottmeyer's project, okay? But for this one, I'm actually going to punch eighth of an inch holes and just tie it closed with a ribbon. It's so cute. Now, I don't have anything specifically to put in here, but it's one and three quarters by one and three quarters by one and three quarters. So you could do, I just saw your comment, Becky, or a square cat head, exactly. <laughs> um, it's like a block, um, oh, I'm trying to think, what are the, it's one of the kids' video games I'm thinking of with, Minecraft. is it Minecraft? Yeah, it's like a Minecraft cat. <laughs> blockheads. Um, so putting in here, you could do Hershey's Nuggets, Hershey's Kisses. I know Lindor Truffles and uh, Ferrero Rochers will fit. I'm pretty sure an EOS lip balm will fit as well. So you got lots of options. Um, fun little treats. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and with my hole punch, I'm only going as far as it'll go, but I want to make sure that I'm punching it in the center. So just right there, trying to catch the light. And then I'll repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So again, lots of options. You can do a straw through the top, ribbon like this, and then I'll show you a third option. So just those hole punches. Now, you'll notice that because of the way this goes together, and I did forget one minor step, to make it easier for your recipient to get this open right here, there's a little bit of a triangle, uh, but I'm actually gonna use a little half inch circle punch and just give a little bit more of a finger notch there. Kind of see where it's lined up. And then it'll just make it easier for the recipient to pull that tab out. Okay, so you fill it with your treats. And again, when we created these score lines, they were folded, they were folded into the box. I'm pulling them out. They'll stick out and then you just kind of pull them up. Okay, but you're gonna to wanna to tuck in the tab first Great option for a wedding, uh, Deanna.
great option. All right, so let me grab some ribbon for this. This is the carryover, uh, what is it called? Silver and white sheer ribbon. It's half of an inch and it is a dream to work with. So again, you'll see kind of this cut edge here on the outside. This is gonna be the back of the box where we've got our tab tucked and our lo little finger notch. That's the back. So I'm gonna tie my bow with the front. You've got a folded edge here on the front sort of triangle pieces here. Um, the easiest thing is to make sure you've got a, your ribbon cut at an angle. And we'll see if the ribbon cooperates on a live stream. It's always, it's always a mystery. <laughs> Not the ribbon per se, the bow. I don't know, do we blame the ribbon or do we blame the bow? All right, so I'm gonna bring in my reverse tweezers. I wanna make sure I got enough of a tail here to do a ribbon. My third hand, love these guys. They are linked on my favorites page if you don't already have a pair of them. But we're gonna go ahead and tie the bow. I, that tail's too long. Let's take some of that back. There we go. And you can decide how tight you wanna pull this. You could pull it really tight if you wanted to. I'm gonna pull it not quite so tight, so I have a little bit of those pointy edges sticking up. It gives it a little bit of like a handle look. So I'm just using my reverse tweezers to kind of hold that little crisscross knot there while I do the loops. And this ribbon is so easy to zhuzh and make beautiful bows with. Um, it's a light sheer ribbon and it just it's a dream to work with. So I'm just gonna zhuzh in my loop-de-loops. They do loose, the knot loosens a bit as you zhuzh. So you kind of have to zhuzh and tighten and zhuzh and tighten. There we go. Get those loops the right size. And then we're gonna go ahead and trim. All right. Here we go. Dove chocolates would be great. All right. So there is it with the ribbon tied on the top and it just looks so cute from the front. I love that. Okay, so I have already done the stamping and cutting, but I'll tell you what, I'll stamp, but then through the magic of TV, um, it'll already be die cut. So one second. I've got a scrap piece of basic white and we're using shaded spruce. And again, the stamp set, just to recap, is the Crafting With You stamp set. So we're using With Love and You Inspire Me. I'm gonna stamp both of them. We're gonna use one for one project and one for the other. And then on these, I'm using the circles from the Reach for the Stars dies. Okay, I'm just kind of centering the sentiment there. You can use your post-it tape um, and then run that through the die cutting machine. So let me show you the finished. Oh, I have them here. Oh, yeah, they are. So whoosh. I don't know what sound to make for that. And then I've also die cut using the Thoughtful Expressions dies. These adorable, they remind me of doilies without the intricacy on the inside, but I love that sort of scalloped edging and stitching. So we're gonna put those behind our circles here. So again, let me tell you the measurements or the diameters of the circles. Uh, one and an eighth for the smaller one. And one and, oh boy, two. One and seven sixteenths technically, but between one and five eighths and no, between one and three eighths and one and a half. <laughs> Split the difference there. So liquid glue. Now I'm gonna line up the circles so that we've got a scallop at the top. You'll just wanna take your time 
when you're adhering um, to the thoughtful expressions dies, just be thoughtful. <laughs> be thoughtful of where you put your circle or your sentiment. I'm going to use my tweezers to give me a little bit more control here. I'm just lining up that bigger scallop on the north and south poles of that die cut. I think that looks good. Okay, we got that one. And then we're going to do the same thing with the bigger one. And get that lined up. I'm just eyeballing the scallops. We got the scallops on the east and west here and lining up the words. We may be the only ones that notice. The recipient probably wouldn't notice, but you know. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put the with love one off to the side and I'm gonna grab three dimensionals. My favorite, a trio of dimensionals. Three is my favorite number, so <laughs> any chance I have to use three. And then we're just gonna pop that up onto the front of this version. I love that. Just a little hint of the basic black behind the white there. And then I'm pretty sure my rhinestones are somewhere in this pile. Here they are. I'm going to grab a medium sized rhinestone here. I love using the putty tip of my take your pick tool. Pick that right up and gives me perfect control of where I want to place that. So there is the ribbon tied version of the envelope cube treat box. You can also use a straw through it if you've got a big enough hole punch. A crocodile will work, but you'll need to punch a couple of times to get that hole big enough, big enough for a straw. But I opted to tie that with a ribbon. So I love that with sort of those tabs on the outside. Okay, so now let me bring in the prepped version of the other piece and I'll show you again how to put this together but the slight difference in how it closes all right so I've done all the cutting we removed those pieces let me bring the template back one more time just to refresh your memory we cut out all the eight triangles and then we cut out these pieces after we did the little diagonal fold here that we manually did okay so now what we're going to go ahead and do is close with the rounded corner at the top, we're gonna to start by folding that side piece here on the first score line from the left and put about a half of an inch circle of liquid glue there right at the point. And then on the opposite side, so we've got one on the front pattern of the paper, one on the back pattern. I'm gonna fold on the first, excuse me, the second score line from the right and place that or press that flat to line up. Okay, and then I kind of go back and forth, just pressing it flat while that adheres. Then we've got, again, this is our top with the rounded edge, so we're gonna focus on the bottom. And again, we got these crazy looking tabs, but again, saving time, we only wanted to cut away a little bit of the paper. The other nice thing is that the bottom of this box, because it's got about three layers of paper, is reinforced, so it's got a little bit of extra sturdiness to it, so. We're gonna do just a little bit on the back side of this piece, like so. And then a little bit on the back side here. I'm not going all the way to the edge because these don't completely overlap. And then liquid glue in the middle piece for now. Okay, so folding that piece down with the glue, then this piece, then the bottom, and that's creating that square bottom and then I'm just lining up the edges. I'm just gonna start to press from the inside here. Whatever feels easiest for you to do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do liquid glue on this pointier piece here. This is the one that you actually don't wanna go all the way to the score line because there's that little triangle cut out there. Then I'm gonna fold that up 
while also kind of pulling it into place. And your lines may not line up exactly, and that's okay, but it's gonna get really close. Because again, we're using the Simply Scored, and we may not be perfectly lining up our points. So let's go ahead and press. Now you probably notice this looks very similar to the last one, and we're gonna leave those tabs, or sorry, those score lines folded in. And that's gonna give us a really nice finish there on the edge. And then I'm just gonna use a Velcro dot to close it. So that's another option. Again, the difference is one we pulled out and tucked in. And then we have those kind of like house or cat ears, okay? This one, we're going to tuck in, fold down, and then the tab is actually gonna go on the outside. Now you could tuck it in if you want to, it's not necessarily gonna hold itself in place. So that's why I'm opting to adhere it to the front. But then that gives you kind of that quintessential envelope look to the front there. You also have that envelope look on the back as well of this version. Okay, remember we flipped it around for that to be the front. So I am going to go ahead and get a Velcro dot. And yes, I will have my little Velcro dot box. I will put together measurements in a tutorial coming soon. So I've got, um, this is a five eighths of an inch in diameter Velcro dot. And I'm gonna pull off the backing from the hook side or the side that's more clear. And I'm gonna place that on the back side of our rounded edge here. And then I'm just gonna take my time closing that. I pulled the backing off of the loop side. And I'm just, I've got this kind of on my desktop so that I can just make sure everything's lined up before I press that Velcro dot into place. I feel like I might've said glue dot, Velcro dot. And then I like to open it and just press on those Velcro dots again so that they're good and stuck, okay? So we've got that version as well. And then you can opt to do the same sentiment if you wanted to, and you could put it on the top of the box. That's another option. I decided to go with the tiny one or tinier one because that actually fits perfectly on the front here. Now, a tip for you, because right now I don't have anything in the box, it's actually easier to adhere that with this open and then I'm putting that flap section on flat on my desk. So this one I'm gonna use liquid glue just because the recipient's gonna be opening and closing this box so I don't want the dimensionals to come loose. So just a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that. And again, I've been enjoying using my tweezers to kind of hold things into place. Might be overkill for this part, but I'm gonna go ahead and line that up. And this piece will fit just inside this shape right here. Just gonna hold that for a few seconds while it adheres. I'm gonna just grab a little mini, the smallest size of the rhinestones. I'm just gonna pop that down towards the bottom where the L, the loop comes down. Let's go ahead and close it again. That's what the closure looks like. And then we're gonna close it like so. Okay, so those are the two different closures. One, those sides fold onto the inside. I'm gonna show you again on here. They fold in here or you can pop them out and fold them up, okay? This kind of looks like something to me. So funny. I don't know, I think they just look like dog or cat ears. Maybe that's what it's reminding me of. So tuck those in. And then you get that nice finish here too. It's just like having tabs that fold into the box that gives you a really nice um, closure on the side as well. So those are the two versions. Again, this is that awesome Sunny Days Celebration Designer Series paper, which you can earn for free with a $50 purchase during Celebration, which is now through February 29th. 2024, my favorite time of the Stampin' Up! year. 
And at this point, we are going to switch into tonight's Q&A. If you do have a question for me, be sure to put Q in front of that question. That makes it into my Q. And there is a little bit of a delay, so if for some reason I miss your question towards the end of the Q&A, it just means it didn't make it into my Q um, before I switched to the next scene. So let me go ahead and tee everything up here. All right, where am I going? <laughs> And as you're waiting for me to tee this up, if you haven't given us a thumbs up here on the video, we'd appreciate that. And if you're new to the channel, I would love to have you subscribe and hit that bell icon um, to be notified for all notifications so you know each time we've got a future video for you. All right, coming up first is, whoops, there we go. How do you decide what to use for your projects, printed paper or cardstock? That is a great question, Phil429. Um, it all depends on the style of the box that I have in mind. If I need it to be a little bit sturdier, I might opt for cardstock. Um, I do typically try to do a lot of the boxes with um, designer series paper just because I think it's beautiful, but I, I don't know. It usually depends on how much strength I need the box to have, whether I do cardstock or designer series paper. Um, and then other than that, it's just what kind of pops out and inspires me and I kind of run with, grab it and run with it. So great question. Let's see. The carryover products, Sherry, the best way to find these are actually in the online store um, itself. So if you pull up um, in the shop section on the online store, you can actually shop all products, but along, if you're on a uh, PC or a desktop, um, I think also on a, I think it might look a little bit different on a mobile device, but along the left side, there's a bunch of different criteria that you can filter the results by. So you could actually filter by the September to December mini catalog, and that should show you all of the carryover products, okay? That should work. I don't know if I've tested that, but that should be the way that that works. There is a carryover list as well, uh, but I don't believe that that's in an easy place unless you find it on a, um, another demonstrator's blog, perhaps, the carryover list. Connie's got a question. Have I seen the glue press from the company that makes the Misty? Yes, from My Stamp Petunia. I have seen it. I have not tried it. Um, and really the main reason is I love using the green glue, but I, the, it, the bottle as it is. Um, but the glue press from My Sweet Petunia, I've heard lots of great reviews for it, especially for those who have difficulty with dexterity or strength in their hands. It is a great way to get uh, a little bit more control on the glue coming out because you kind of have that trigger pull on the glue press and it comes with um, refillable bottles. So if Tombow is your favorite glue or if Art Glitter Glue or something other than the, I think it comes with the Nuvo, I can't think of the name of the Nuvo glue that it comes with, but it comes with an empty bottle as well and you can use whatever your favorite liquid glue is and put it in the glue press and use it that way. So I've heard great things. I don't personally have a need for it, but um, it's got a little silicone sort of plug in it when you put the when you set the glue press down so that your glue doesn't get all gunked up. So I do recommend it. I've just not tried it personally myself. Let's see. Ooh, most of my boxes have some kind of an embellishment. Which is your favorite, ribbons or gems? Your bows always look so pretty, it's truly an art. Thank you, Kelly. I have to give credit for the bows to my mom, Pixie, because she taught me how to tie bows and her bows were the best. I still have a few of her handmade projects that still have the bows the way she tied them, but I have others where <laughs> kids have untied them or <laughs> and I've never been able to get them back to the way they were, but yes, the credit goes to her. Let's see, embellishments. Oh, it really depends on the project, but I will say for me being a busy mom and uh, wanting like quick and easy projects, I, I err towards embellishments over ribbon, especially if it's a card. While I do love ribbon on cards, sometimes the best detail on a card is just a little rhinestone or some type of adhesive backed embellishment. Ribbon, it kind of depends on the 3D project, but I would say if I had to pick one, embellishments. Gems. <laughs> I 
Let's see. Oh, this is a good question, Lorraine. I, she's wondering if I've heard of anyone having trouble with the handle falling off the mini die cut machine. I have had a few customers that that has happened to. Um, on the, let me see if I can grab mine really quickly. It's really, you may not have noticed it, but right on the end of the handle, this is a rubber plug. You'll want to pull, actually there's two rubber plugs. It depends on what has fallen off. If this part of the handle has fallen off, you wanna pull out this rubber, rubber plug. If this part has fallen off, this is also a rubber plug. And it is covering a screw, and I think it's a screw, but it probably has an Allen wrench. What do you call the, I know it's an Allen wrench, but what do you, it's a hex. It might be, I haven't actually studied mine to see what's in there, but you likely need to um, either re-tighten the screw or put the screw back in if it's completely fallen off. And I would recommend possibly using Loctite um, before you put that screw back in. And blue, not the red. The blue Loctite, not the red, Brian says. What's the difference? What's the red? Red is permanent. Oh, red is permanent, so use the blue. Okay, blue Loctite. And if you've got somebody in your household or a friend that has some strength, have them tighten the screw for you. That would be, in my household, this guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, look for the little plug. Uh, you wanna pull that out. And you could actually, um, you're not, you may damage this a little bit or put a little bit of nick, nicks in it, but I would use something like the, um, piercing end of your, I'm looking for where mine is, of the take your pick tool. You could try that to try to get that rubber plug out and try to fix it that way. Let's see. Yes, Donna, um, plain cardstock would work with this box because of the fact that it's done diagonally and um, you were trimming away some of the excess. So let me give you an example. Where did I put that other box? Um, this tinier version, I did it without doing diagonal score lines. And even with the uh, designer series paper, which is lighter weight, do you see all this bulk at the top here? Um, that will really give you trouble if you're using cardstock. So because of the fact that this is done diagonally and we're trimming away basically half of the bulk on this part, this isn't a good example, but yes, it will work with cardstock and then you could uh, decorate with um, designer series paper panels after that. But yes, it will work with cardstock. Let's see, Dee has a question. If you leave the top of that front tab, from the bottom, will the top tab slip under it and hold? Um, I'm thinking that through D. If you leave the top of that front tab from the bottom. Um, maybe, I think I understand what you're asking, like tucking this, I can't do this backwards. <laughs> I'm like looking at myself tucking this one underneath the bottom one, you just have to be very strategic about where you put adhesive. Um, but give it a try with um, your sample and see if that works. And if not, use some adhesive instead. Let's see. I did get the glass mat, Michelle. Um, I haven't started using it. I actually have a glass mat already, but I did get it so I could show you guys. I did share it on my sneak peek live stream on Friday, December 22nd, if you wanna go back and check out that one. That was the one that I did the corner bookmark and then I did a sneak peek of products. Yes, Linda, the new modern oval punch which is technically not new. It came, it was actually in the, I know Linda, you know this, but the, um, it came in the September to December mini catalog. That's this one, modern oval punch, as you see the reflection. Oh, look, there's me. <laughs> um, the modern oval punch coordinates with, I can't grab it because it's under a pile of stuff. There's the watermelon stamp set in the celebration brochure. It cuts out the full watermelon and it also cuts out the half watermelon. You just kind of cut it in half. Kona's um, having a nightmare. That's, she's yelping in her sleep. 
<laughs> our chocolate lab is having a nightmare. Um, so yeah, I love that. Take a look at the fine print in the celebration brochure because lots of the products tie back to existing products we have or products in the mini catalog. I love that Stampin' Up! has done that. Even this paper coordinates with the suite that has the rainbows and the uh, raindrops in the clouds. <laughs> that sweet. <laughs> oh, I can never remember the names. So Destilu, that is included on the downloadable project sheet. Um, there is at the bottom here, it says alternative. Those measurements are to score and punch at one and five eighths and four I need to change those measurements. It should say four and one eighth, but it says four and five eighths. Um, so I will update that as soon as the live stream is over. See, this is why when I get the project sheets ready, I usually make an oops, um, but it's one and five eighths and four and one eighth. I will update that download. The link will stay the same, but as soon as it gets updated, you'll get the most re recent version of the project sheet, but I'll do that after tonight's live stream. All right. Making sure I'm not skipping any. What is the weight difference in the DSP and cardstock? Ooh, Brenda, I get this question a lot. Um, the design, I don't know off the top of my head. And I've actually asked recently, I've asked Stampin' Up! recently. And actually the answer is that the information is proprietary because Stampin' Up! uses multiple um, paper mills for their designer series paper in their cardstock. And that information is proprietary to the paper mills, but the cardstock is around the colored cardstock. If I'm remembering and anybody in the chat, if you want to correct me is around 80 pounds and the thick basic white and thick, very vanilla. I believe that's 100 pound might be 110. I'm not positive on that. The designer series paper, that's the one I can never remember what the weight is. It's obviously lighter, but I, I know there's a difference between cover weight paper. I know that there's a whole science to paper and I can never get the lingo correct. Um, so feel free to correct me, but I cannot remember the weight of, I want to say it's 65 pound, but don't quote me on that. That's my guess, or at least that's what's in my brain. <laughs> um, so Lisa, the next Pixie patron get together, what she's asking about my um, channel membership, it's $4.99 per month through YouTube. And my YouTube channel members get a special members only stream on the third Thursday of the month. So for this month, the next Paper Pixie or Pixie Patron uh, members only stream is going to be Thursday, January 18th. So that'll be next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're interested in becoming a member, you can look for the join button near the subscription button just beneath this video. Depending on your device, you might not see a join button. You can go to the paperpixie.com slash patron that magic link will take you to the membership page um, to join the channel membership. And we would love your support if you wanna join in with us. Um, we have a good time. All right, the size of the Modern Punch D is, I know I used my ruler. <laughs> oh, I did just measure, so that's part of the problem. See, I didn't put stuff back. Okay, so the Modern oval punch is two and three eighths inch wide by one and let's see one and 11 sixteenths tall okay so two and three eighths by one and 11 sixteenths that's just before one and three quarters so almost one and three quarters tall okay we got, oh, I see your question again, Lisa. Okay, we are at the end of tonight's questions. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, what was I going to say? My brain just went, pew. 
Um, we will be live again next Wednesday for episode 314 at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday, January 17th. My next Pixie patron, as I mentioned, that members only live stream is next Thursday, January 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, again, I've got a link in the description if you're interested in Girl Scout cookies for Lily. That link is there in the description, the link to the free project sheet, and I'll get that measurement updated as soon as I get over to my desk after the stream tonight. Product shares will ship out early next week. Uh, you'll receive an email with your tracking number for that. Again, celebration, lots of options to earn free product by shopping and shopping big or joining the Stampin' Up! family. Lots of options. You can shop in my online store at thepaperpixie.com slash shop. And today is the last day to subscribe to the January Paper Pumpkin Kit. So if you're interested in getting in on that, if you're not already a subscriber, you can just go to thepaperpumpkin.com slash, no, thepaperpixie.com slash paper pumpkin that will take you to the Paper Pumpkin website. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at support at thepaperpixie.com. And as always, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little Paper Pixie. We're so grateful you joined us tonight. Thanks to those of you that have watched the replay. And here is a shout out to my amazing Pixie patrons. Thank you for your support. We will see you all next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.